In this video I'll do a little Q&A and a quick project that's a preparation for my next big project. Before I get to the questions though, I think I have something interesting to share. I've built a stand or base with a drawer for a freezer which will sit on top of here and just be raised about 20 centimeters above the ground. Nothing fancy, absolutely basic and simple construction, it doesn't even need to be pretty. That's why I used all scrap material and I also didn't record the whole thing. It's almost finished, only leveling feet are missing and a drawer pull. The interesting part is the way I made the drawer slide. Oh crap, it just slides on wood or more exactly on this coated plywood that's just very slippery and works fine and I could make it almost full extension and with a stop so it won't fall down. To get it out or install it all you need to do is lift it up when it's all the way out. I don't think this is anything new but here's how I've done it. So here's the main slide that the drawer just slides on, then there's this top slide that makes it almost full extension and keeps it from tipping down. And then there's this block here that catches on this edge and keeps it from coming out or falling down. The side pieces of the drawer box are not as tall as the back, which allows them to slide past that stop block. The gap in between the back piece and the top slider is very narrow, just enough so it can slide easily and immediately contacts once the drawer wants to tip down. That also keeps the drawer almost horizontal at any position. With humidity changes and the wood expanding, this could end up binding, but since this is kind of plywood, I don't know if it will happen, time will tell. And if you watch really closely at this edge here, you can see that there's a slight chamfer. Same kind of chamfer is on the opposite side on the bottom of the drawer. And the two chamfers allow the piece to be rotated one way inside the guides. Without the rounding on the other side of this example piece here, this wouldn't be possible. As I mentioned, nothing new I guess, but if you didn't know already, now you know and maybe can use it in your own projects. And now to the questions. Ah, oh, fuck. Quite a while ago in this video I asked for questions, but I made that so it was pretty hidden at the end of the video and you could only get to that if you really watched till the end. And I did this on purpose because every single question I got is great. So let's go. What are your favorite YouTube channels you enjoy the most or where you never miss a video? So channels that I never miss a video are Jeremy Schmidt with whom I also made a live Q&A a few years back, also together with Chris from Tulify, then Matthias Wandel and Stuff Made Here. Um, oversimplified, they make excellent videos. Then also RC Test Flight and Tom Stanton, they make excellent projects. Then Cold Mirror, she is a YouTube legend in Germany and if you know her and her channel, you know what I'm talking about. And then also Let's Game It Out, he plays video games as wrong as possible and does that in a hilarious entertaining way about a video a month and yeah, just pure funny entertainment. Would you recommend that cheaper planar thickness set that you made a new fence for to a somewhat beginner woodworker like myself wanting to mill my own materials? Yes, definitely. Great machine to start with. It gives you so much more freedom. In your opinion, what is your best project and why? That I think is obviously my dining table build, closely followed by the curved shelf. It's a dining table because it was a really big challenge and it was something that was needed and now gets used every single day. And I was able to make something that will probably outlast myself. Hopefully. And same for the curved shelf. We're just big challenging projects that I learned quite a lot from. How much wood would I woodchuck chuck if I woodchuck woodchuck wood? I would say 42, can't be wrong. What changes has there been for the YouTube woodworking niche since you started? Well, I think it's not such a niche anymore and it gets really difficult to get attention with standard or simple projects like table saw sled. So many people have already done that. Why should you make another build of that? What do you work study outside of YouTube in depth? Depth. Um, what I surprise engineering. So more general engineering in my bachelor and for a master um, it's more focused on product development. With router lifts that are adjusted with a screw what stops the vibration from the router rattling the height adjustment mechanism? Is this something your router suffers from? Usually there's a locking mechanism, if not, nothing stops the vibration from rattling at the height adjustment mechanism. Depends on how well it's built, if it affects it or not. 
On my router, it gets clamped in position with a lever. Any update on your bow blanks drying? Um, yes, they are still drying and from time to time, also mostly off camera, I finish one of them, just some relaxing turning and they always make good gifts. Where are you going with your life if you find a girl having to leave your home basement? Find a girl? I guess I would build furniture for her. Slash us. And leaving the ba uh, I don't like to think about that. Too much heavy equipment to move. Has planning and presenting via YouTube helped with planning and presenting at school or work? Yes, definitely with presenting and talking in front of people, even though I'm never talking in front of people but to this camera. But I also don't feel like an idiot anymore doing that. Maybe that changes when I see that recording. And I also don't feel like an idiot when I'm talking in front of people about something. Maybe that changes when I see that recording. And I also don't feel like an idiot when I'm... And also integrating some humor here and there in presentations, just like I do in my videos, was always appreciated. What are your thoughts on dust collection on the CNC router? Is it worthwhile and do you have any recommendations on how to do it? It's definitely required. I made a video a while ago where I built a good attachment for my old CNC router. Soon I will take this to a whole new level for my new CNC router. It will be a 40 plus minute long in-depth build and that then answers this question quite precisely. It's also a good transition for the little project I'm doing now because that's a preparation for exactly that project I was just talking about. For an upcoming project at the CNC router I need compressed air at the CNC router but at the moment there is no. A few years ago when my dad and I bought this lathe here we also installed more outlets and compressed air and if you follow the hose this goes all the way back here through this wall and on the other side of the wall is the compressor. Actually on the other side of the wall it comes out here then goes right there over here and there is the compressor. So the idea basically now is to just branch off another hose right here that goes on this wall then behind the wood shelf and then up to here where I already drilled holes to install a pressure reducer. The way I want to branch that off is I have one of these um, junctions, crossings, don't know exactly how you call them, and then have three of these fittings for a hose and with a hose clamp. And the fourth input or output is plugged with one of these caps. Usually how you get the threads and this joint airtight is with some PTFE tape and that's exactly the way I did it on this joint. But I wanted to try if I could 3D print a gasket out of hard TPU and see if that also makes it airtight. So for test I will be using this quick connector because that's airtight on itself. At the pressure reducer of the lathe I can test that. These two ends are also sealed with plugs and let's just increase the pressure and see if I can hear anything. Four bars, nothing. Six bar, nothing. And eight is the maximum. Well, not quite because the compressor isn't quite full. But I can't hear anything. Can't hear anything. Hello? Yeah. So, 3D printed gas. Great quick connector. Uh, yeah, 3D printed gasket works. This cheap quick connector, not so much. Yes, that was dangerous. I know. Saves some time. Took about one minute to print one. And this is how it looks in a close up. To mount this, I already drilled a hole in the wall and installed an anchor. And now I have a piece of wood, a little block, that screws into that with only a single screw. Oh, hello down there. Now I can use two of the four holes to screw that to the wood. That's easier than trying to align two of these holes in the concrete wall. I should also move these cables a little bit, but at least this is now mounted. The new hose of course mounts to the pressure gauge, but since I need to route it up here and also behind a cable here, it's easier to start from this position. Since this new hose was rolled up for really long, I guess, in storage, 
It really doesn't like to be straightened out right now, but now that it is kind of straightened out, I pressurize it and let it sit like that for a little bit. Maybe that helps to get it more into a straight shape. The clips I just 3D printed, you can also buy them, I think, but only in a pack of like 20 or so, and I only needed four. And behind the wood shelf, I made this kind of clip that I can screw in from the side into the wood because I don't really have access from the top. Um, yeah, let's just ignore that. All right, it's up there and back here when the hose comes down in this corner there's also a clip, but I didn't show that. The hose will also straighten out once it's pressurized. Look at that. That looks much better. Okay, I will now go to the compressor and pressurize that line and you will listen if it leaks. Still hear me, but now I'm putting it in. What do you think? Is there a leak? Okay, this was just not tight enough. Okay, so far so good. The leftover part of the hose I can then use to hook up the compressed air to the pneumatic stuff of the CNC router. One more thing about the pressure reducer you might not know. They usually always have a side that's the inlet and one that's the outlet. On this one, the outlet is also marked. And every single one I bought so far was configured so the inlet is on the left. But for the new one, I needed it to be on the right. And that's totally possible because on the back there's just a plug installed, so if you swap the plug with the pressure gauge and turn it around then in and outlet are also swapped. Or if you look at the setup at my compressor you can also use the back with another quick connector. You just need one that has an eighth inch pipe thread and then you can just install it and have two outlets at the compressor. 